Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be unboxing the awesome miniature that is Rebold from Moonstone the Game. In the video, you'll see all the contents of the box up close, and then I'll build the model and go through the character card as well, so you can see all the abilities that come with him. A massive thank you to the team at Goblin King Games for sending this model out for me to share with you. Rebold is such a great model and he's one of the reasons I reached out to Goblin King Games to see if they wanted to do some collaborations because I just think it's so cool, so well done and the game itself is just fantastic. So much fun to play, I can highly recommend it and if you like painting and collecting miniatures, not even playing, then this is a great collectible game. The miniatures are resin and fantastic quality and they've really got me back into painting and encouraged me to try new techniques and try to improve my painting as well. So definitely recommended. But let's see what's in the box first and then hopefully that'll help you make up your mind whether or not you want to add this guy to your collection. Now Moonstone characters are all packed with these foam inserts. Sometimes you get smaller pieces of foam depending on how big the models are. But these sandwich all the contents together and keep them really safe so you're not going to get anything damaged. Some parts can be quite fine. It is resin as well and so this does a great job. You can see there that takes all the damage. Then we've got the card, the little stand and the resin components in the little plastic bag here. So we'll get this opened up and have a close-up look at all the parts. One thing I like about Moonstone is not that much to build and some of them come in one piece which is great but what I like to do is give these a good scrub with some hot soapy water or warm soapy water and then dry them off before I glue and paint them. But here he is, you can see you've got Rebold the Troll on the left and then you've got Goblin number 2917 on the right. These little goblins don't last long riding with Rebold that's for sure. Very nice little characters and then on the back you just see all the great details here. I'll show you him assembled near the end of the video and I've also primed and dry brushed it which really brings out those details. But I just think it's fantastic. All the little stitching in the clothes, the fingernails, the hands are so well done here. So characterful. You've got the cannon there that's going to go on his back. But yeah, those hands are just really well done. The detail even on the fingernails, it's hard to get a good focus on the camera. But you can see the fingernails are even like chipped in places. Just brilliant. And I think the resin is just great quality. And for the price, this is really good value, especially when you compare it to other game systems and the quality of the models. Let's grab the ruler out. We can have a look. He's going to be, what, around two inches or just under two inches from foot to top of his head. And so with the cannon and little goblin number 2917 on top, be a little bit taller. You've got a 40 mil base there with the slot in place and the nice little lip so you can get some good filler in there for your basing. Here's the card for Rebold and so this is a two-sided card, really nice quality, thick, you can see it's textured card as well so it's got a laminate protective surface on it which is awesome. You can't write directly on this, you want to be putting it in a card case. I like to use the Dragon Shield 63 by 88 mil and they fit in there just perfect. But we've seen the components now, we'll have a better look at the card in a minute, but now let's see the model put together. And here he is, Rebold and the little goblin, all assembled and primed and then dry brushed and now you can really see those details. So as we spin him round, you get to see all the little creases, check out those trousers, I mean look at that stitching around the pocket, fantastic, and then you see all the different metals, uh, yeah really nice, the little chain mail underneath. Those fingernails are standing out a bit more now. And then also the toes. Really great job there. And he's just walking forward slowly, which fits in with his rules and the narrative too. So he does look like a sluggish character. Not the brightest in the bunch, but he can certainly do some damage with that cannon. And what a big nose he's got as well. So I love that. A great feature of this awesome model. So I use the Surface Primer, German Panzer Grey for this, and you can airbrush it on or brush it with a brush. I tried that recently, it worked really well. I did a video actually, if you want to see that, and then some white paint over the top as a dry brush. And then when you start putting your layers up, it doesn't really come through all that much. It would with contrast paint, but if you're doing a traditional layering like I did with Dim and Dimmer here, you're still going to get some benefit, but for me, it just helps bring out those details. Okay, let's have a look at Rebold's card now. So he's got the Goblin and Troll keywords, Melee 2, Range 2 Inch, Arcane 3, Evade plus 2. 
He's going to be slow, so his jog action is going to be limited to two inches. Makes sense. He's a big chap carrying a big load as well. He's got ironclad knuckles, so if the character deals piercing or slicing damage, you reduce the damage dealt to nothing. But if he deals impact melee damage, increase the damage dealt by plus two. So he can be pretty tough up close in the right circumstance. He's tough as well. Ramshackle armor, reduce all non-magical damage by minus one. So he can take a punch as well. But this is the main thing for him. This is his arcane ability, fire cannon, two energy, 8 inch range and you're looking for green and target character suffers 3x minus 1 impact damage then is moved x directly away but there's a catastrophe as always this model suffers 3 wounds and all models within 2 inches suffer 3 magical damage and are moved an inch away too so that's a bomb going off there for sure you got a signature move on a high guard 11 wounds and we can see 2 energy with a 40 mil base that just leaves the signature move then on the high guard, so we'll flip the card over and then we'll have a look at exactly what this does. So this is called Short Fuse, upgrade for high guard. Now whatever the opponent plays, Rebold is not going to deal any damage to them. But check out this end step. This model will suffer three wounds, but all other models within two inches suffer three magical damage and then moved one inch directly away. I love this. You're going to get a proper explosion. I really like these kind of wacky rules that are just crazy. The trolls have got some really nice rules and the giants too. And Rebold has certainly got some as well. Now, if you've got the Arising book, you can find out a bit more about Rebold. There's an excellent piece of narrative there. It's got all the details from the card, including the reverse there for short fuse. But it's this narrative that really makes Moonstone so cool. And I love how they've got something for each of the characters, little stories to give you a flavour of what they're all about. I mean, the artwork's beautiful. Goblin Airship looks awesome. There's just so much to like about this game. Even just to get the book and look through it has been a pleasure. But to actually build the models, paint them and play them with all the intricacies built on top of what is a pretty straightforward set of core mechanics. I just think this game has got so much depth and a lot to offer. But definitely recommend picking up this book, The Arising 2. If you're new to Moonstone, you might like this how to play Moonstone video that I made. It goes through everything you need to know to play the game for the first time. I've also done loads of unboxing videos now, including a recent one, which was for Tumbledown Street, a great addition to the starter set. I've done a book review for the main rulebook as well, and lots of painting videos, including the tree folk, and also let's paint a pug. Here we got Doug the pug all ready to go. And Dim and Dimmer, I really enjoyed painting that model. And also was lucky to get hold of a sneak peek. I got a model early on from the new Shades collection that was recently on Kickstarter. And they did so well and it's so well deserved. I was really happy to see them getting a great result. But I was also very excited to be able to paint one of the models before anyone else got to see them. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyed having a look at what is one of the best models. I mean, there's so many in the collection, to be fair. I thought I'd be playing goblins all the time, but I've actually been attracted to the humans. They're really good, and I've had a great time with those. But I'm going to get this guy painted up this week, and so look out for that video coming very soon as well. And I've almost got enough to start doing some battle reports now. I've unboxed a load of miniatures. Once I've got him painted, I'll be in a good position to start those. And then you can really see the game come into life and the narrative being played out on the table. Thanks again for watching and hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, it would be fantastic if you hit the like button. Subscribe as well for more videos like this one. There's links down below if you want to go and check out Moonstone, find out more about the game and grab a box for yourself. But for now, thanks again and I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.